Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Renisha, and today I have a very interesting, multifaceted guest. I am so excited to be speaking with her today, and I would like to introduce you guys to Miss Alicia Blunt, and she's coming all the way from New Jersey. Alicia is a flight attendant for a major U.S. carrier. She's also a vlogger and a real estate agent. Her bio says that she is actually creating and relocating an agency for people who want to travel or live in Portugal. Welcome, Alicia, to the show. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Awesome. Glad to have you. Like I said, you are very multifaceted. She's wearing so many different hats. And I, I've said to her before, loving the hat that she's wearing today. It makes her look so creative and dynamic. So we are going to dive right in with Alicia. And my first question to you, Alicia, is what is it like transitioning to a travel agent? Or like, like you said, relocating individuals to Portugal. What does that actually entail? Okay, so what I actually have, it's a, it's a concierge travel consultancy. So, so often in my process of moving to Portugal, mm -hmm. I did a lot of research and I realized that it really wasn't um, out there, that information, you know, how do I, you know, get my NIF? How do I get my bank account? Small things that you need uh, that you find out along the way. Mm -hmm. So I realized that there was a, a, a niche. A lot of people are interested in doing this move and everybody's in the process of figuring it out, crawling along, scratching through the surfaces. So I said, why not put all this information in one place and create one agency so they can make one phone call. You know, a lot of times it's just easier just to pick up the phone and talk to somebody who already knows this. And so that that's the whole um, process behind me coming up with this idea because of what I went through when I was doing my move, uh, trying to figure out how to get the NIF, which is a, like a Portuguese social security number. So because you need that before you can get your bank account, you need your bank account before you can get an apartment. So it's just, it's a process that you, it's easier once you know. Yes. I would think it would be very difficult to move to any foreign country. So I think like you're doing this for Portugal, but actually I think every other country, and because Americans, we live everywhere. It would be great to have something like that set up for wherever people are trying to move to because just the little intricate details as you're saying if you don't know it can be very stressful obviously for you that's great exactly that's awesome. exactly awesome, awesome. so does you. that mean that you're moving to portugal or does that mean that you live in portugal what does that mean for us <laughs> Well, actually, in October of 2021, I did move to Portugal. I rented an apartment in Lisbon for six months. And I wanted to find out because I had lived in Italy uh, for three years. Yes. So I moved to Italy in 2019. And I came back um, when COVID began. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to decide, do I want to go back to Milan or do I want to go someplace else? And um, I made the decision to choose another destination. Originally, um, I wanted to go to New Zealand. I'm all about safety because I'm by myself. So I wanted to go to a safe country. And so this was what I used to decide what country did I want to live in. So, of course, it was uh, in the top three, it was New Zealand. Portugal was third place and second place was Iceland. Wow, interesting. And in all honesty, I've been to all three. <laughs> so you have, yes, you're a traveler naturally. New Zealand or Portugal? Mm. And Portugal won. Yeah. Okay. I mean yeah. Uh New Zealand was really at the top of the list, but they changed their immigration laws, unfortunately for me. So that that's a come, it kind of got pushed a little further down uh, because okay. it's not as easy to immigrate to as it once was if you're retiring there. Interesting. And I've been to New Zealand many years ago. Beautiful, beautiful country. Haven't been to Portugal yet. So I'm thinking this is good to know someone who's already there when I decide to come over. 
Here's my travel agent. Love that. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. In the <laughs> bio, you also mentioned that you're studying Portuguese from Portugal rather than Brazilian Portuguese. So tell us a little bit about what those two different types of Portuguese look like. Okay, so basically it's it's pretty similar to the way we speak English and British English. So the Portuguese from Portugal would be like the British English and the Brazilian Portuguese would be like American English. So you would hear a different accent. So I'll give you an example. Some words are even different, like in England, how they say the lift and we say elevator. Yes. Well, uh, in Portugal, they say parajin for like a bus stop okay. but in brazil is parada so they actually use different words sometimes yes um and it could be just the accent so uh okay i'll give you an example uh a word like different in okay. portugal is different yes and in brazil it's different you hear the ending Yes. 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 So the the accent at the end changes a lot. Interesting. So the people in Portugal they speak more of that quote unquote British English. Proper English. Whatever because of the proper exactly. English. Look, <laughs> yeah. So the exactly. So they have uh more rules. And even though they try to um they're trying to get it to be more simple the board there still are some you know idiosyncrasies and just like the british Eng english people can understand us and it's more difficult when we're watching their programming for us to come i mean as you listen to it you start to understand more and more but initially people have a difficult time trying to understand the the terms and you know just the the english itself if they're from america so it's similar to them in Portugal. The Brazilians sometimes do have difficulty comprehending the Portuguese from Portugal. It's very interesting. Never thought about it that way. Because I know, like, I'm Caribbean, so my English is a broken English. To Americans, it sounds different. To British, it sounds different. So I'm just imagine all these different dialects in every different language as well. Very, very interesting point. So that tells me again, so you speak Italian because you said you live in Italy. And you speak in Portuguese. And what other yes. languages do you speak? I love this. What other languages do you speak? <laughs> the only <laughs> uh, other language I speak is, is Spanish. As well. <laughs> That's it. So uh, well. Spanish was the first. Okay. And then I learned Italian. And now I'm um, in the process of learning Portuguese. Wow. That must be amazing. You just, I speak English and... Sometimes barely, right? So just imagine speaking four languages. That is amazing. That is amazing. Great accomplishment for you. Going a little bit more serious because, you know, I'm a therapist and this is quote unquote a sort of mental health kind of show, not necessarily. But, um, you know, in your bio, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you were recently diagnosed with PTSD. Um, can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about how this has come about and what triggered this diagnosis for you? Okay, well, um, I guess the basis for everything really started that I was flying on 9-11 when everything happened. I was on a the last leg of a six-day trip and that happened so many years ago, so I thought it was all dealt with. So this year, January of this year, mm -hmm. I was on a flight. Uh, I wasn't a working crew. I was on my way to London to actually work a trip coming back. So I was a passenger. So we we are on the taxiway. And for some reason, we seem to be sitting there for an extended period of time. Okay. Um, there were no announcements made. So I just thought, this is kind of weird. Okay. But um, after some time, uh, we wind up taking off. And we get into London. Everything is fine. I feel like something is going on because every time I walk by the pilots, they are very quiet. So, okay. so that's weird. So I go to my room and have my regular um, layover, enjoy myself. And then I just all of a sudden start getting phone calls from my company. 
Okay. And, you know, they're calling me, telling me about changes and things of that nature. And it really isn't until, you know, I'm like, I said, is there anything I should know? And they're like, oh, no, no, you know, it's just, uh, uh, oh, one of the pilots got sick. So, you know, we're changing the, the pickup time. Okay, fine. So it's when we get down to pickup is we, we get a new pilot. And this is the first information I have about actually what occurred and how close we came to actually having almost the worst um, on the news. It actually said if it had happened, it would have been the worst incident in aviation history here in the U.S., so <laughs> that's what that's that incident and finding out how close I came to being a part of, even though it didn't happen, it was just that mental image yes. uh, that, um, that did it for me, you know, and I, um, I started to have a little anxiety at that point yes. uh, because, you know, you, you're thinking many things. One of the things I was thinking is how come when I asked what was going on, I didn't know. So I got yes. a little angry about that. Absolutely. And, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we, the more we talked about it, cause we all came together to discuss this as a group, it, it, it brought up just a lot of emotion a lot of emotions for me. Yes. And um, unfortunately, the way things were, I wasn't able to schedule myself with my um, therapist at that time. Okay. And I, so when I actually did um, have my uh, appointment, um, you know, I thought, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll still have my appointment, but I've dealt with this. But during the appointment, I realized I really hadn't dealt with it. And the more I talked about this incident, the more the 9-11 incident was like coming to the forefront. Yes. So I guess in some way I had compartmentalized it. Um, and so it, it was just a lot, a flood of yeah. different emotions and thoughts and feelings. Um, yeah. Yes. As for those who don't know, PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. So what I'm hearing is with this incident, you were triggered. Those memories of 9-11 came flowing back. This incident triggered that for you. And you know, it's so important what you said is that we have to deal with these things, right? So we feel like, oh, I got it. This happened how many years ago? I'm okay. And so many years later, you're not okay because it, it really was never dealt with. You know, those emotions were really never dealt with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So dealing with it, even now, it's, it's never too late to deal with anything that happened from, from our past. So you dealing with it now, hopefully moving forward, you'll be able to at least manage those symptoms and those triggers if, God forbid, ever it happens again. But what, I, what I'm going to say is that I'm hearing this same situation happening over and over again as a matter of fact it's just happened this week mm -hmm. it literally just happened this week here in the u.s where two airlines came very very close to each other and i don't know what's triggering that mm -hmm. they're saying it's you know it's atc a traffic control something is happening out there where the skies are so crowded the, the skies are crowded oh, wow. right now and mm -hmm. it's happening much more frequently than i think we even realize, you know? So I'm happy to hear, yeah, that, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. I was going to ask you how you're managing this now, but clearly you are in therapy. Clearly you're speaking to someone about it. Clearly you are getting the tools that you need to manage this. So I'm happy to hear that. Um, Great. Yeah. I'm going to shift a little bit, just kind of like on the same frame, but I'm going to ask you, you know, how are you managing Um your work-life balance? How are you creating a, a healthy work-life balance for yourself? And also, how do you approach self-care? That's really, really key right now. Um, well, you know what? The the my I live by this philosophy and it's that, I, I heard it many years ago, I was still in high school when my cousin told me this. Okay. And um, she said, if you're going to worry about it, then don't pray about it. If you're going to pray about it, then don't worry. And, and so yes. I just, <laughs> and, and, and you know, when I thought about those words, yes. it, it made sense to me. And so I live with that philosophy 
And so by um, by doing that, it lets me have more, I would say, um, balance when I'm dealing with situations. When I have a challenging situation, I don't have the stress. It kind of relieves some of that stress that instead of me taking it on, yes. um, by me uh, having this release, because I think about that and I said to myself, if she can feel that way, then, you know, how much so, more so can I? Yes. I have faith too. Yes. And so, and honestly, that's one of the things that really helps me I, between that and then, you know, having a, a medical professional too to speak with, yes. you know, when I feel like I really need it, I I, I feel much, much better, you know? Um, and so I think that's the most important thing. A lot of times I think people just um, feel like they have to deal with it on their own and you really, really don't. Absolutely. Yes. There is help. You know, it's hard and, for us to ask for help as well. Good. Exactly. We are having a little it, you know, difficult difficulties, Alicia. I'm not sure. You're, you're kind of a little bit frozen at times. So I'm not sure if it's um, the Wi Fi where you're at, but. I can hear you oh. all coming through, but every once in a while, your frame is frozen. We can absolutely keep going without it, though. No problems. I just want you to let you know. Oh, okay. Okay. No I'm sorry. <laughs> it's nothing you can do. It's technology. Okay. So it's all good, but I just wanted you to know just in case. Okay. <laughs> I'm frozen okay. with the pieces here and there. You seem good for now, but yeah. Yeah. And I I, I think I cut you off someplace. Um. The other part of that question was, um, you know, how do you approach self-care? Well, the, the the main thing is that, first of all, I I feel like you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. And so for me, um, I mean, I have no children, but I do care for my, my, my mom. Yes. And so... In order for me to take care of her properly, I have to take care of me. So when it comes down to eating right and 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 taking care of myself, I have to take care of myself physically and yeah. mentally. And by me doing this, then I feel like everything else stays in balance and I can go forward. Love it, love it, love it. Which is going to lead me to my next question to you, but can't help but say this. You know, the um, the flight attendant demos on the aircraft, the video that shows when the mask falls down, it clearly says, put your own mask on first before taking care of others. Because if you're passing out, it's you true. can't take care of anybody else around because you don't even have oxygen for your own self. So I love that you said that. Exactly. Awesome. You got to take care of yourself <laughs> first if you want to be around to take care of anybody else. But like I said, that leads me to the next question because I know you a little bit and I know that you are on uh -huh. an amazing weight loss journey. And I just, I just can't wait to hear about this because I know a lot of viewers are struggling and have been struggling with weight loss for years. So my question to you is, can you tell us a little bit about your weight loss journey and the transformation that is taking place within you right now? <laughs> well, thank you for noticing. <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll tell you how it started. I was um, with friends and I, a friend of mine posted a picture of me to my um, Facebook page. Okay. And one of my high school friends noticed the picture and she contacted me nice. and, you know, she's like, Hey, Alicia, how are you doing? She's like, you look great. And we were just talking a little bit. And then she mentioned um, that she, um, you know, had something that she thought might help me out if I was interested in, you know, getting healthier. And I told her, you know what, I appreciate that. But really at this point I had been, literally I had done so many things and I really ate right. And that, that's a difficult thing because you're eating right and you're still not seeing a change. So what's yes. happening? Exactly. And so I, I, I went to seek medical or professional help yes. and um, I was actually contemplating uh, one of the types of bariatric surgeries. Cause I said, 
I have to get healthy. My whole thing is I have to be healthy. And me continuing to gain weight was not going to benefit me or anybody in my in my aura. Yes. And uh and so I, I told her, I said, thank you, Ingrid. But I said, at this point, I really think I'm just going to go for the, the surgery. I'm really considering it now. I'm going to see the doctor. And she said, Alicia, she said, and she sent me some pictures of some people. She said, honestly, because Ingrid, um, I've known her, like I said, since high school, but she is a fitness freak. She is always exercising she runs wow. marathons half marathons Wonderful. she's in great shape yes and so fitness has always been like at the mm-hmm. forefront of her life you know wow. so um uh, when i spoke to her i realized that it had to be something to it if she was coming to me to speak to me about it so i said okay yes. let me just hear what you have to say and so we made an appointment and we talked about it further and i said all right, I'll try it. Because even if I was going to do the surgery, I still had to lose weight. Yes. And when I uh, listened to her and followed the program, it, it really was just like she said, wow. you know, because she said, if you can follow the program, you'll lose weight. And so I said, okay, I can't help but try another thing. And I did. Mm-hmm. And I did have success. So it's been, you know, gradual, but it's been steady. Awesome. I wonder if we can get Ingrid's information for our viewers. I mean, is, is she is this what she does professionally? Because we can Yeah, actually. She she so you know what I could do? I'll give you her information and maybe you could put it in the description box for people if they're interested too in weight loss, you know, they can contact her and she can uh fill them in on more information. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're here to help each other. Absolutely. And again, I know it's something that so many people struggle with. If you're saying, yes, mm-hmm. I've tried this program and it actually works. And I know you've tried mm-hmm. lots of other things in the past. Absolutely. Why wouldn't other people want to try it? Absolutely. So um, how, mm-hmm. how has this, how has your weight affected your mental health over the years? Prior to right now. Honestly... I honestly, when it comes to weight, Mm -hmm. I don't think that it really um, affected me mentally as opposed, well, and it did in the, in the fact that I was concerned for my physical health more so than anything else, Yes, you know? So, and that I was concerned that, you know, I want to be here longer and me being overweight is not going to help me reach that goal. So, and, and that, being concerned about my physical health yeah that that it did absolutely Mm -hmm. so what can you say to others who are dealing with weight loss issues now what would be like a word of encouragement or if you said you have experience with this what can you tell other people who are dealing with this issue right now well one of the most important things is i know when it comes to weight loss people are concerned about their body image yes but No matter what your weight is, it's important to have a positive body image because weight loss is more about well-being and being healthy than it is about actually losing the weight, Mm -hmm. you know? And so principally, I I think that would be something that I would tell people to not focus on losing weight. It's easy to say once you start losing weight, but to focus on getting healthy as their number one one thing secondly i would say um is that you should educate yourself Mm -hmm. because once you educate yourself about nutrition about how to manage your weight Mm -hmm. that is not just just going to contribute to a better well-being for you because you'll be more in control right you know yes and then it's it's important to have a network of support. So you could do this in so many different ways. If you don't have somebody like in your family there to encourage you, you could, I mean, we live in the days of like electronic technology. So you can pick up your cell phone (laughs) and have a support group on Facebook or 
you know, because actually my program, that's one of the benefits is that, you know, we have a weekly call, which is nice because you hear encouragement from other people who have lost weight. And then they have that Facebook page. They they have um, recipes and, and then you get to see somebody's photo before and after. So it gives you that sometimes you might feel like, oh, mm-hmm. I can't do another day. And then you yes. just flip through that and that just gives you the little boost. Absolutely. No man is an island and we all need support regardless of what we're trying to accomplish and achieve. So I love that. It's yeah. all around. Yeah. And, you know, looking at weight loss. And, and what, what, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say one more thing yes. Yes. that I, I don't want to forget is that I would suggest that they set realistic goals. Correct. You know, so maybe you want to lose a hundred pounds, but why don't we just start with the first 10, exactly. you know, set that as a goal to say, okay, I want to be down 10 pounds and give yourself a specific time, All right. you know, and, and when you achieve that, mm-hmm. that gives you the motivation to continue. So what we say, this is breaking down that big goal into smaller, more manageable ones. Bite size goals. Absolutely. The big, Absolutely. The big exactly. And taking that baby step to get there. But what I was going to say before, too, was that looking at weight loss from a different perspective, like you said, it's about being healthy. We're not trying to lose 100 pounds and then go back to how we were before, because then that doesn't make any sense. So it becomes a new lifestyle, it becomes a new way of life. Exactly. And that's what has to be adopted. Exactly. Uh, once you start on whatever mm-hmm. that program is, that becomes a new lifestyle for you to continue. Because we don't lose 20 pounds to go back to it once you start eating the bad, the wrong way again. It doesn't make sense. So it becomes exactly. a lifestyle. So I do love that. Absolutely. That's awesome. And great, great advice for our viewers as well. <laughs> so I was looking at a video recently. And I saw you mentioned, you were like, I don't know where you were. The background was just absolutely gorgeous. And you were talking about fire. So <laughs> I want you to talk a little bit about fire and how can people um, who are interested get involved in this? And you can um, go ahead also and explain what the acronym means for us. So that would be great. Okay, sure. <laughs> so um uh, FIRE, the acronym means financially in de- financial independence, retire early. Yes. FIRE. Yes. So uh, some people are after FIRE. Some people just want FI, which is just financial independence. Mm-hmm. Some people enjoy what they do and they don't want to stop. So Absolutely. either one you can have. Yes. Um, so how did I get involved? <laughs> it, it happened, believe it or not. <laughs> I um, because I was in the process of doing this move to Portugal and, um, my mother, she uses YouTube for everything. Ooh, okay. So in her research, she came across, yes, absolutely. Your mom is uh, she came across savvy, this... by the way. So that's awesome. <laughs> Cause you know, that generation, they always get on the computer and they're telling me your mom is using this for everything. That tells me she is technology savvy and I am not mad at her at all go ahead thank you so um she came across this couple and she was like oh they moved to portugal with their family she said you should check them out and so i said okay and i did so their channel is our rich journey and um it was interesting because I started looking at them about the move, but mm-hmm. their channel is about so much more. Okay. It's about teaching uh, about what they did, but teaching you how you can do it as well, oh, nice. which I really like because they share their, you know, they're not, yes. they share their information. Yes. And so, and they give away a lot of information for free. And if you want to go further and further and deeper, of course, they have all different ki- types of different courses to help you learn how to do more of this on your own. But um, so that's how the whole introduction came. And I would uh, uh, check out different videos that they put out. And then last year they um, came across and they had like this mini documentary and it was about their fire class 2023. And they said, you know, if you want to be a part of, you know, the next class, you know, here it is, this is what we're going to do. And this is the benefits. And it was, it was, they were offering a special 50% off. And I was like, you know, I like a bargain. Yes, of course we all do. (laughs) So I, um, 
So I said, you know what? I think because in order for you to get the most out of anything, you have to invest in yourself and educating yourself is an investment in your future. Oh, yes. You know? Yes. And, um, and like, uh, you don't know what you don't know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so, yes. And so once you are become a part of a group with like-minded people, then it, it's, it becomes something so much more. And that's what this is. It's really a community of uh, people of various ages. I mean, um, because I'm a part of the Our Rich Journey FIRE program. Okay. And so we are broken up into smaller groups. Our group is about 15 people and we range in age from 15 to, I think the oldest person in our group is like 62. Okay, nice, nice range. So we have different gifts to share with each other. Yes. And and it really helps because we have an accountability meeting each month and we support each other, you know? Um, And for the most part, my group is in the Northeast and there's a small uh, group of them that are actually in Florida. And so we're in the process now of actually meeting up in person, doing in-person meetups so we can support each other more so with our process. And some people are more emphasizing uh, investment in real estate. Others are doing stocks. Um, and, And for me, it's about creating side hustles so that I can have more income to do my real estate business. You see? Yes. And so so all of this, yes. I just learned through this program. And and I really like the couple. Like like I said, you, you could probably put them in your description too. But the name of their channel is Our Rich Journey. And they have, this was actually their fifth year anniversary on YouTube. Wow. And um, they, they never knew it would grow, grow into such a large community, but it really is a community of people. And we're not here to knock each other down, but it's all about uh, uh, helping each other and supporting other people that are trying to, you know, better themselves as well and how, how we can help each other. And, you know, I love that because that, that's what we just said for the last question, sharing. There's so much for everyone. There is no need to be, well, this is all mine. There's no need for that. There's so much for everyone. And there is something yeah. to be said that, that, you know, when you have made it to a certain level, that you want others to come along and make it too. Why not? There is room at the top for everyone who wants Absolutely. to Absolutely. And, yeah. and that's the thing. When when I the the video you saw was actually in Portugal, oh. and they have four different meetups wow. that they sponsored, which was really nice. Wow. Um, so we were able to meet the people that we had saw on Zoom in person, and we had drinks and cocktails and food, and it was just a nice oh, wow. environment to get to know each other in a more intimate setting. Oh, that's gorgeous. And um, it's it's just like you said, it's. They have theirs. They are multimillionaires at this point. Yes. And they don't have to, you know, come out and share their knowledge with us, but they have made that decision to do so. You know? And so it's nice to be a part of that. Yes. Exactly. There is a reward in helping people. I don't I don't care what you do when you help others. There's just something inside of us that feels gratifying. We're all we're all in Absolutely. this together. Absolutely, it's definitely something that's bigger than us. When you say, "I want to help others reach their goal," I want to help others reach their potential. There's something that just feels good about giving to others. I love that. Absolutely, this is awesome. So we'll definitely get the info on them. To put in the description for this video as well. Lots of stuff in here from you. And that's why I'm like multifaceted. She wears so many different hats. I, I just absolutely love it. We're going to be wrapping up right now. So, you know, is there anything else that you would like to leave our listeners with today? Well, because I am in the process of doing so many things, like you said, <laughs> I did start <laughs> a YouTube channel, which I like to just mention. It's called Travel with Alicia. Yes. And in this YouTube channel, I try to give people helpful hints. They travel with me as I um, circumvent the globe. Yes. 
Yes. But I try to give people helpful hints. Yes. Because so many people want to get out there and some people can't get beyond, you know, their own fear. Yes. So I, I like to help people deal with that so that they can see that travel is possible for everyone. And for those people who don't think they can do it on their own, I do. I started a company called Travel Like a Pro yes. and it's a, a website. And what I do is it's concierge travel. So if you just want to make a phone call, you, you say, you know what, forget about making that uh, plane reservation or I don't feel like, you know, making this hotel reservation. It's a one stop phone call. I have a consultation with you, find out your likes and dislikes yes. and everything can be arranged. So that that's basically what I do. I've been doing this for some time now. And so now I said, you know what, let me just make it totally professional. Love that. I love the one-stop shop. And because you are a traveler, you're a globetrotter, you would know the path to take beyond that the tourist piece. Because when I go, when I travel, I don't want to go in a tourist spot. I like to go to the other, like where the locals, where the, where the locals eating in Italy. That's what I want to know. That's where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So just having that yeah. knowledge and having people say, okay, I want to travel like a pro, but I also want to be like a local. I just kind of like that. You know, all exactly. the like, hidden, yeah. you know, shacks that you go into and the food is like absolutely amazing. That's where I think most people want to travel. Yeah. It's amazing. Great. Mm-hmm. And think about it. You have some people like like me, they'll go on a solo expedition. Like I, I flew to India by myself, but then you have some people, they want to be on a family retreat and yet you have some people on their honeymoon. Yes. So, yes. you know, you, you have people who want the, the luxury, which we can do Yes. or just like you, they yes. want to know, see, to me that that's when I really feel like I have yes. vacation when I know yes. what it's like to be a local. I like yes. to see the culture up yes. close, but that that's me. That's how I feel like I've traveled. Yes. Not everybody's that way. That's Absolutely. the come we do the consultations to, mm -hmm. to make it personal, truly personal. So they can have the yes. trip of their dreams, you know, love, love, love it. Oh, this is great. Woo. So many talents. You are like, Oh, Miss, Miss Side Hustle. Love that. Yes. Thank you. You know what? Each and every one of those pour back into you. And that's what I love about it. Each and every one of those hustles pour back into you. Because like I said, when you're giving and you're being this way for other people, it just makes us feel so good inside. So it is pouring right back into you. I absolutely love yeah. it. Oh my gosh, Alicia, thank you so much for sharing your expertise, your knowledge, your, your personal journey and stories with us today. I just want to say thank you for being here. It was an awesome interview with you. Well, I am so grateful that you asked and I am happy to be here and share my experiences with the, with everybody, all your fans and viewers, and hopefully we'll stay in touch and I'll find out what's going on with you in the future. Absolutely. And just, hey, there may be a call for a second. I don't know what's happening. So who knows? Again, there's so many hats that you're wearing. There might be other things we could talk about that we haven't talked about today. So stand by for a phone call or, you know, an email anytime in the future. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. But, absolutely. I'll be waiting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for joining us today. I just want to say a thank you to each and every one of you. If you guys haven't already done so, please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next show. Have an amazing, amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.